Praise the Lord. Once again, this is Elder White, the bishop, uh, coming to you with uh, a word dealing with relationships. This is a part two um, from last time. Uh, I really want to get into this. Just talking about relationships, period, can take a long time, which I don't plan on taking a long time, but I do plan on giving it some time because I feel that there are a lot of people that are dealing with a lot of issues, and if they don't get dealt with, you're lost. So, um, let's pick up where we left off. Last time we were getting to the point where we were talking about uh, people wanting they dessert. Uh, but let's backtrack a little bit. When I prayed about uh, the Lord giving me a wife, he told me something very, very significant about her. I asked, I said, well, where's my wife? You know, everybody knows them mate and all this other stuff. Where is mine? And the Lord spoke to me and said, well, at this very moment, she's marinating. Well, at that time, I'm like, what are you talking about marinating? Marinating is the process where first, if you do it right, the meat is tenderized or it gets beat. So that when you put it in whatever flavoring that you want it to taste like, it will absorb it a whole lot easier. Uh, the meat isn't tough. And so he was letting me know that at that time that my wife, he was working on it not only working on it, but he was putting her in a solution. I was like, well, what's the solution? What, what, what's she marinating in? He said, she's marinating in me. She's getting the more of me first, and then she'll be ready for you. He said, another uh, key component about marinating is uh, when you cook it, it won't dry out as easy. When it go through heat, it won't get dry, it won't get hard, it won't get brittle. When, it, when she go through problems, she won't get hard and brittle and want to give up, but she be somebody that's able to, to stay there, to fight, to go through. Sounds good, don't it? Well, uh, I kept going and he said, when you get your wife, one thing you don't have to worry about is her being underdone you know, meat that's been underdone, it's, uh, it bleeds. You ever meet somebody that bleed all the time? You see the one with the issue of blood, she was a bleeder. She bled for 18 years everywhere she went. And if you know anything about blood, blood stinks. And you know, somebody with a bad attitude, they stink. They bleeding on everybody. Talking about this ain't right, and talking about that ain't right, this ain't good, and that ain't good. And they always complain about stuff, just bleeding on everything and everybody. You know they were there because the stench of their attitude lingers. She wasn't going to be that kind of person. She said she won't be overdone. What is overdone? Overdone is a hard person. One thing I ain't want was no hard woman in my life. Hello, don't nobody want no mean, stocky, can't hug, can't love type person always mad always upset hard can't just can't do nothing with him but he said she's gonna be just right in other words she's gonna stay in until the right temperature and then she's gonna be ready to come out she's not gonna be a runner she's not gonna uh, flee when she go through trials. but she's gonna stay there until the process is worked in her life that's the kind of person that you should desire somebody that's going to stay with God until the process is done. Lord, don't take me out until I'm ready. I don't want no underdone meat. I don't want nothing tough and overdone, but I want something just right. And that's what he told me about it. But the key component of all that is weight. I tell people that's the Christian cuss word, weight. Why would you tell me to wait? Waiting is important. We live in a society now, everything is quick, fast, and in a hurry. Everything is. Uh, we got the microwave, so we got microwave dinners. Uh, all you gotta do is pop it in for three minutes and you come out with something. But don't you miss them times, or if you had a grandmother that, or even a mother, that would 
uh, cook a meal and she would take her time with it. She would turn the oven on, not the microwave, and she would prepare everything. And she would put it in the oven and the whole house would fill with the aroma of what she was cooking. And, I, and even then, you know, your stomach would growl and you may get an attitude, but you knew after a while, if I hold out, I'm gonna get to partake in this bad boy. And she would make you wait. And you would have to sit there. You may fuss and you may complain, but you had to wait. But you were waiting in anticipation because you knew what she had prepared for you was gonna be good. Well, I'm here to tell you that what God has prepared for you is gonna be good. The thing about it is you have to learn how to wait. You cannot go out there and try to make your own meal, try to uh, do your own thing, but what you have to learn how to do is wait on God. There's nothing wrong with waiting. It's not a sin to wait. It's a sin when you try to rush God to do stuff. You have to learn how to wait on him. Because if something is rushed, like that fast food, you ever get a fast food meal? Or a matter of fact, you was in a rush and you didn't check the bag? And you just grabbed the first thing they gave you? And then you get home and you find out, well, uh, I didn't order this. That's kind of how relationships are. When you just grab the first thing that come your way, the first thing come your way, you'll go take it home with you and come to find out it wasn't what you asked for. You see what I'm saying? So we're learning how to wait on God. It's not easy, but it's necessary. Very, very necessary. Now, we're about to get to that other part. We're talking about the dessert. Uh, that part right there is probably going to make some folk mad. Some people probably get upset about it. But I think it's going to be beneficial that you hear what we're talking about when we're talking about that dessert. That's the next part. I hope you're ready. Stay with me.